In total control, went through the gears nice and steady to begin with, and then opened up later on. Just kind of talk us through how it felt out there. Yeah, I mean, um, I thought that West Indies made us work really hard for the runs that we've that we put on the board there. Um, you know, it's it sort of swung and nicked um, throughout the whole inning, so um, it always felt like there was something in there for the bowlers and. Um, you know, it's something obviously that like we spoke about after the GS ball about being being clinical and um, you know if you're the person that's um, managed to get yourself in on wickets then you've really got to go in and make it count. Um, and obviously we you know we keep saying that we base our test matches on big first innings runs and um, you know we managed to do that this week and um, you know really promising signs for us going forward. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, having someone um, like Summers at the other end it obviously allows, um, you know, to go through the gears differently like I like to do. Um, you know, having Summers at the top to be that rock um, and have nothing phase him and, uh, and just sort of go along as he does, um, it obviously makes it a lot easier. Um, but yeah, as I said, West Indies made us work really hard for the runs and um, obviously we're in a very, very strong position there. And, and do you, where do you feel your, your batting is at the moment? Do you, you know, obviously you've had some, it's a 10th 100, you, you've had some great days with the bat, but, you know, four test hundreds in the, since the start of 2019, I think you're averaging over 52 in that period. Do you feel as though your batting has even gone to a, to a higher level, more consistent, more in control? Can, can you tell us about that? Yeah, I, I obviously feel, um, feel good with the bat in hand. Um, I didn't really, to be honest, in the first two weeks of the build-up period in the GS ball. Um, you know, I felt like I was batting with a stick of rhubarb, just couldn't hit the ball. But um, yeah, it's nice. I think once you get out into the competitive environment, and you know, when there's something really on it, um, it obviously brings out a, another side to, to most professionals. Um, but yeah, I'm obviously really happy with with where everything's at at the moment. Uh, um, you know, just understanding my game plan. Um, and trying to play the game as well, um, you know, understanding where, um, you know, West Indies, the, the way that West Indies are going to operate when they bowl at me, you know, I knew that their sort of mode of operation is to, is to sort of hang it out wide and, and test my patience. So, um, you know, just really making sure that um, mentally more than anything, I'm always switched on. And, and last question for me, um, obviously a lot of news has been around Joffre over the last couple of days, um, you know, we were speaking to you about his bowling at the Southampton and I think you said what a great relationship you've got with him. You, you two, two seem to be on the sort of same wavelength. I mean, how have you helped him through this period? What's your, what's your opinion of, of what happened and, and the mistake that he's made and, and how he goes forward from here? I think from us as, as players and, um, you know, as, as a group of, well, as, it was, as England cricket group, um, you know, this is a time where our, um, you know, way of operation really needs to come through. Um, you know, we really need to be there to support Joffre right now because obviously um, he's a big talking point. Um, and obviously he is, you know, by himself um, because of everything else going on at the moment. But it's making sure that he doesn't feel like he's by himself, you know. The worst thing that we could do right now as a team is to just sort of leave him and, um, you know, see him in five, six days' time and, and then say, all right, you know, times like these for people are uh, very, very tough. Um, and you can feel like you are all by yourself, but um, I don't think anybody is, is going to allow that to happen. Joff is a massive part of this group. Um, and as, as everybody is, you know, if it was, if it was anybody else about Joffre, it would be the exact same um, way of handling it that we would do as a team. Um, you know, it's all good being there for people when things are, are going going well and smoothly. But you know, what really comes through is is how you operate with someone when um, they need you the most. Thanks. Thanks, Dean. Uh, we'll go with Stephen from the BBC, please. Um, ben Dean just touched on your numbers for the past year: four hundreds in twelve tests, averaging well over fifty. What do you put that that run of form down to? Um, 
don't know, really. I think just hunger, desire, and um, always wanting to get better, you know. Um, you know, I'm always trying to think of and, and, and speaking to the right people about, um, you know, where to get better in, in all different areas. Um, but, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm at an age now and, and at an experience level now where I really understand my game pretty much all of the time um, and sort of try and not get carried away with everything, you know, and obviously being a, an instinctive player is, is great at times, but not letting that affect how, um, you know, I, I sort of, I don't know, sort of to get too far ahead of myself. You know, there's times in the past where I've sort of let how I'm playing at a certain moment sort of affect me and think I can go out and sort of play some big shots and it'll all be all right. But, um, you know, we spoke about it last week after the Jewish Bowl. It's just, you know, just being as clinical as you possibly can. And if you're the person out in the middle, just really making sure you're going to make it count. So this week, there was a, there was a lot of that for me is, is you know, you know, being a man who's, who's going to make a difference with the bat. Um, and obviously there was two of us um, in this first two days in Sibbers um, who played a fantastic knock. And um, it's great science for us going forward that um, all the noise around them after Southampton literally hasn't affected them whatsoever. Um, you know, it's a great way to respond to, to any criticism that there was by going out and banging 100. So, um, you know, all the credit got to go to Dom Sibley as well. And you talk about not getting ahead of yourself, but do you have targets and goals that you wish to fulfil? Can you get even better? That's always a target for me, is just always trying to get better. You know, I think I've answered questions like this quite a lot. Numbers, figures, all that stuff, don't really care about. Just as long, the main number for me is, is how many wins. Cheers, Stefan. Will Max Versus, please. Ben, ben, I think this is your um, slowest century in terms of balls faced. You batted for over eight hours and it's your longest test innings, all that kind of stuff. It, it's not sort of the, the Ben Stokes that people might sort of instinctively think of. It, uh, do you find these innings almost more satisfying now when you're sort of really grinding out a position for a team like that? <laughs> to be honest, I was more buzzing than I faced 300 balls than I did when I got 100. It's <laughs> something that I never thought I'd ever be capable of doing in batting against 300 balls, but... Um, you know, it's, as I said, it's you know just being a being aware of conditions and and how the game's being played. You know, obviously, the more time you spend now in the middle, the more chance you're giving yourself at getting runs and obviously getting put into bat after losing the toss to go on and get 450 like we did as a team is is amazing, and we've managed to to give ourselves a real chance at leading the series. Um, and yeah, you know, obviously went through the gears um, as I like to do at different periods. Um, throughout the innings, um, but yeah, yeah, happy with with how things have gone. Okay, we'll take a few more. Um, should try you again, Rory. See if you're working. With the audio. Okay, how's that? No. George. I thought you were waiting there. Now, any more questions, then, guys? No. Okay. Cool. We're done. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Thank you.